I'm Aaron Baker from Phonedog.com, and it's part two of a dogfight battle between the Nexus 4 and the Xperia Z. Sony's got a lot to offer in the Xperia Z, but the Nexus 4 is stock Android at its finest, so it's got a lot of fans. I'm gonna put them together in a dogfight and see which one comes out on top in part two, Nexus 4 versus the Xperia Z. Part two of a dogfight battle between the Nexus 4 and the Sony Xperia Z. And like I said in part one, at first glance, these may look like totally different devices. I mean, you got the Nexus 4 over here. It's intended towards the enthusiast, the techie, that person that perhaps wants to root and mod, and really not towards the mainstream consumer based on both the selling strategy and the device itself. Very few people in the U.S. go to Google Store and buy online for $299. Most people, most mainstream consumers, walk into their carrier store and say, I want a phone. And to that end, they go, for something like the Galaxy S3 or the Note 2 or the One X Plus or these other hot devices that have multi-carrier availability. The Droid DNA, these devices that are either hot and marketed well by carriers or devices that are at least available in the retail store. Then you have the Sony Xperia Z, not even available in the U.S. yet on any carrier. I'd hope to see it come soon as the ZL to maybe AT&T or T-Mobile or Sprint or all of the above. Doubt we'll see it on Verizon, but I would love to see it. Maybe it could be like the, uh, the Droid Xperia, the Droid Butterfly crazy robot, blah, 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 blah. I don't know, some droid name like that. Step away from the dogfight for a second to thank these guys right here at Best Buy Mobile because when you go into Best Buy Mobile, you can buy it online and you can pick it up right in store at Best Buy Mobile. Nexus 4 Xperia Z over here. And so part two of a dogfight, we're going to talk a little bit about the cameras on both of these devices because you keep in mind here, 300 bucks gets you the baseline version of this device. This one's about 780 to bring it in from a place like Negri Electronics, which is where we bought ours at negrielectronics.com. So about 780. It's not a cheap device by any means, but what it brings to the table is a beautiful 5-inch 1080p HD display. Whereas over here, you got a 4.7-inch display that's equally gorgeous, but it's only 720p or a little bit above 720p. It's not quite 1080p. But keeping in mind, 300 bucks gets you this device. It's really a high quality device all around for 300 Benjamin or for three Benjamins, not 300 Benjamins, because that would be a lot of money. But anyway, take a look at the screens here, because again, a little bit of a size difference, a little bit of a uh, clarity difference. But then you got the cameras on the back: eight megapixel camera here, 13.1 megapixel camera over here, and we'll go into the cameras on both of these devices. And so the benefit you get with the Nexus side here. Whoops, did not mean to load that. Let's go over here to the camera. Benefits you get over here, 8 megapixel camera, but you do get some nifty goodies like Photosphere, you get Panorama, of course, and Photosphere is one of those things, and I found a couple of people that have commented on Twitter finding me some really rare use cases where people could use it, but for the most part, it's kind of a, uh, a boutique feature, if you will. So I can align this up to start and just kind of take a picture around the room here and just keep going. And so once we get it to a certain point, I'll show you what I'm talking about. Photosphere, basically, where I can see all these different parts of the room, and I can bring it over here. And you can see it's creating this kind of photosphere. I mean, literally what it sounds like, a photosphere. I have to get it into the little circles to position it. And you can see it's just creating a nice little area all around. So it's got this photosphere. I can see it being useful in a lot of different ways. But unfortunately, that's one of those things. It's cool. Google Plus, you can add them to Google Plus. But beyond that, I don't really see much of a functionality for that. Overall image quality, yeah, it's decent. It's not my favorite by any means. I'll take my Note 2 that I've got over here, and we'll load it up on the Samsung logo. Definitely a decent image. And keeping in mind, again, the price point here, not bad at all. I've been using this to take pictures for the phone dog Instagram feed at Instagram.com slash phone dog. And it's decent. But again, keep in mind that versus this. Really a beautiful camera over here. And we'll get it to focus in on the Samsung logo. And there we are, bam. That was Shazam. And then we'll take a look at the picture of your 13.1 megapixels, really beautiful clarity and image quality. And we'll go back and take a look at some of the features. You can see I can map where I was at when I took it. And I've got my options here with resolution. I can go up to the full 12.1 megapixels. I keep saying 13, I mean 12.1. And bam. And we'll just keep taking some pictures. But you get the idea. And then over here, you've got your settings, like I said, resolution, which we kicked up, geotagging, smile shutter, quick launch, self-timer. You've got the option to do kind of a burst mode feature on this device as well. And when you go to the gallery, you can see how they're organized. We'll jump into the gallery and bring this one back and get rid of the Note 2 because it's not part of this dogfight. And we'll come in here and take a look at the gallery. Where are we at? Do, 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 pictures. Come on. Oh, I'm sorry. Album. There we go. And you can see all the different albums that I've taken. March 2013, September 2012, April 2012. These are backgrounds slash additional pictures that came with the device. So I like the organization here. I like my albums. Very useful. A couple of different views in which you can see it. So let's look at Quadrant Standard as well. Take a look. And Quadrant Standard is not the be-all to end-all. But what I will say, it does a pretty decent job of giving 
some uh, performance indica- uh, performance indicators rather on both units. So we'll load these up. 2,100 milliamp hour battery over here. 2,330 milliamp hour battery over here. I've, I've used both for call quality and you know casual testing. I'd say both have been put through some moderate use cases. Texting, calling, emailing, browsing the web, that stuff. I mean, obviously, your mileage is going to vary. It's not going to be exactly like mine. What I will say, I'm not incredibly impressed with the battery life over on the Nexus 4. It's decent, don't get me wrong, you know, but I find myself having to charge at least once throughout the day over there. A little bit better over here. I've noticed the standby time is great on this device. Xperia Z does a good job with span- with standby time. Overall talk time, though, and overall kind of on-screen time or screen-on time, I should say, not as great. I get about 12, I have about 11 to 12 hours with moderate use, and my moderate use is obviously varied from day to day as well, so kind of blending those times together to say 11 to 12 hours. So again, not by any means an official battery test, just to keep that in mind. 8,059 over on the Xperia Z on Quadrant Standard, 4,878 over on this device. So keeping in mind the differences there. Both have on-screen buttons, though. That's something to keep in mind. So got that. And we'll go into YouTube on both and kind of take a look at what a video looks like. So we'll go to YouTube. And let's see if we can get this signed in. While we're doing that, let's go over here to YouTube. YouTube. And go over here. Looks like my Wi-Fi is kind of sputtering here in the office. So pardon that. Let's see if I've got any videos that I've taken through my 30-day challenge. I think I got rid of all the videos that I've taken on this 30-day challenge. But we can take a look over here as well. We'll go to YouTube just to show you. Okay. And let's say, oh, the Hangover Part 3. And you can see it does it over here as well. The on-screen buttons go away when you load up video content. So, and I won't play very much of this. You never quite know with the Hangover Part 3 what's going to show off. But you can see the buttons go away and come back whenever you click on the display itself. Let's do a speed test as well. Unfortunately, this one's on Wi-Fi. I do not have an AT&T SIM card in this one just yet. But I will load up speed test over here. Both of these are capable on AT&T of HSPA plus 21 megabits per second. Depending on what AT&T market you're in, you're going to get anywhere from moderate speeds to uh, great speeds in the Dallas area, which is obviously home to AT&T. Speeds are pretty decent. I get anywhere between about 3 and 9 megabits per second on the download, anywhere from about 1 to 3 megabits per second on the upload. Running a little slow right now, 3.5, comparatively speaking, I should say. 3.5 megabits per second, somewhere around there on the download. And let's see, it's trending up. Let's see here, 4.26 megabits per second. And then over on this device, or over on the upload speeds, rather, about one megabit per second. So like I said, between that one and three megabit per second number. So much slower than LTE. If you're coming from an LTE device, you're immediately going to notice it. But then again, if you're not, it may not be something you care about. And also T-Mobile's HSPA Plus is incredibly fast. I've gotten speeds as fast as about 12 to 13 megabits per second sitting here in the office in the Dallas metro area. So we'll take a look at that as well, since both of these are unlocked and not carrier specific. So it's a tough call like anything else between this because a lot of it's going to depend on how much money you want to spend, what you're looking for. You may be a Nexus fan. You may be looking for the latest and greatest from Sony. You may be, you know, have $780 to spend. You may want to spend $300. There's a lot of different factors to consider here. So when I make a call on this dogfight, I'm kind of trying to blend those all in together into one call for a dogfight champion. That said, this one may be better for you. This one may be better for you. I'd have to sit down and have an individual conversation with every single person watching this video which unfortunately, there's no time for that, or else I would love to do that. So the Dogfight winner here, when you blend in everything, you blend in features, benefits, price points, all that stuff, the winner is the Sony Xperia Z. It's got a lot to offer. Sony's got a great ecosystem that is incredibly underrated with PlayStation Network, with you know on-screen stuff, with movies. They've got some great TV stuff, and I love to see them kind of integrate that in and really market it, kind of like Samsung, how they've done it over the past with the Galaxy S3 and the Note 2, number one. Number two, I'd love to see this come to the U.S. on carriers, more than just AT&T, at least two carriers, and get some marketing dollars behind it. Come on now, Sony, we'd love to see this in the U.S. The Nexus 4 is a great device, and you cannot underestimate the price point of this device. That said, I think what you get over here outweighs the price point, at least in my opinion. That said, people are watching this going to be like, well, I only have $300. That's great. This is still a fantastic device. They're both incredibly built or built incredibly well. Would recommend either one, but winner, Xperia Z. Keep it locked in PhoneDog.com for continuing coverage of both of these devices. Let me know what you think of this dogfight at PhoneDog underscore Aaron on Twitter. Facebook, Facebook.com slash hi Aaron Baker and then on Google Plus at gplus.to slash phone dog. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site for continuing coverage and as always, we'll see you next time.